According to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey, JavaScript is the number one most popular programming language in 2019. It's also not even close to the language it was five years ago. Almost everything has changed for the better, from where it can run to the actual syntax of the language. As we go into 2020, here's JavaScript explained in just five minutes. When you load any page on the internet, your computer sent a folder of files, including at least one HTML file. This HTML file is able to load JavaScript with something called a script tag from either the same folder or elsewhere on the internet. JavaScript is the only client-side language, meaning it waits to execute code until it's on your computer using a program called the browser. Each browser has its own engine, which is what actually executes the code. Among other things, client-side code can change the display, send data, or fetch more data from the server. You might have heard of client-side frameworks like React, Angular, or Vue, which build on top of JavaScript and make writing client-side code a lot easier and more maintainable. But that's another video. Traditionally, JavaScript is an interpreted language, meaning the code is read line by line instead of having to go through a compile step where it's converted to machine code. Browsers have actually added something called the just-in-time compiler, though, to speed up their engines. While JavaScript was known as a slow language in the past, computers are so fast now that's hardly the case anymore. JavaScript's doing pretty much everything these days from running servers to machine learning and more. We can do a lot of stuff on the back end now with the JavaScript environment known as Node.js. That means we can write APIs, talk to databases, and talk to other servers, all with JavaScript. Node uses the same V8 engine as Chrome, so it's lightning fast. Still, things that are very performance intensive are going to be better off with Go or C++. Let's talk about the language itself. Variables hold either single cell primitives or compound data. Primitives are usually numbers, booleans, or strings of text, while compound data is held by arrays and objects. In modern JavaScript, we use the keywords let and const to declare variables. If you plan to change it later, use let, otherwise use const. Arrays, also known as lists in other languages, are just multi-celled, ordered clusters of data. Objects, also known as dictionaries in other languages, are pretty much what they sound like. You give it a word and it retrieves the definition. For example, if I give it the key, name, it'll retrieve the value, Aaron. The DOM, or document object, is the most important object in JavaScript. It's a JavaScript representation of the structure of our HTML and is present in the variable document when we load the page. The document object contains many element objects. Through the DOM, we can search for specific elements, add user event listeners, or change how the page looks. All this is possible through a set of methods called the browser API. We'll get to methods soon. JavaScript's a C-like language, meaning it stole most of its syntax from C. This includes if statements, for loops, while loops, and more. Speaking of loops, most commonly we'll use a for in loop to iterate over an object and a for of loop to iterate over an array. Functions are just any code we want to use more than once. We declare these with the special keyword function, followed by whatever we want to name our function, and finally the parameters or inputs to our function. You can think of them as variables that are set later when we use our function. We'll also want to return something which will be the output or result of our function. Call a function with its name and by passing in inputs as arguments. Methods are the same as functions except they're attached to different data types. We call these methods with the dot notation. Functions can also be written like this. Parameters are on the left, and it returns automatically if written on one line. Arrow functions are generally used in array methods, which take a function as an argument and run that function on every item in the array. Don't worry, that's as complicated as we'll get. Another huge part of JavaScript is known as asynchronous programming or performing non-deterministic operations, such as a network request to a server to fetch more data. We don't know when the request is gonna return or if it's gonna fail, so we have to handle both of those cases. Async programming has evolved a lot over the years in JavaScript, but the current standard is async await, and it's awesome. All you have to do is add the await keyword, and it will pause your program when you send a request until that request either comes back or fails. While not technically JavaScript, I also have to mention TypeScript, which compiles into normal JavaScript. Vanilla JavaScript has what's known as dynamic types or no types, and TypeScript gives us static typing, meaning we have to be specific about what kind of value is in a variable. This seems like extra work, but it actually helps us catch a ton of errors. 
Finally, let's talk about NPM, the Node Package Manager. Chances are, if you need some code, someone else has already written it. You can download it as a module, and chances are, it's well-tested and bug-free. Anyway, that's JavaScript in just five minutes. Please like the video if you liked it so other people can see it. Thanks for watching.